streaming chess with brainwaves. And if you're looking for science, you're in the right place. If you're looking for brainwaves, you're also in the right place. We're the only channel on Twitch or I think almost anywhere on the internet where you can watch brainwaves um, real time as a person plays chess. We're trying to get data. Uh, we're trying to get as much data as possible where we will eventually be able to uh, correlate the types of brain waves, delta, theta, alpha, beta, gamma, um, with actual events during the gameplay and with actual strategies and, you know, what I'm thinking, what other people, um, you know, what I'm thinking during any kind of situations, including uh, mistakes, which I make uh, quite often, um, but also some of the really great play, which uh, every once in a while I really uh, hit on a good score. My viewers, my regular viewers will vouch for me on that. And let's go ahead without any more ado, we'll go over to the chess, uh, Lee Chess here. And we'll cl click on a game. For those of you who've never played Lee Chess before, you just uh, click on the menu item, choose a game. We're going to be playing uh, five minute chess. That's that one right there. And there it is. We'll see uh, what we can do here. So he just played. Uh, we have a few seconds to get started here. Okay, we're doing fine. This is a Carol Can. Uh, we're just going to try to move up through these uh, first opening moves quite quickly without wasting a lot of time. And if he gives us any problems, we'll just keep going forward without um, worrying too much about what he might do. Now this bishop move keeps him from castling and usually seems to work pretty darn good. Uh, okay. Don't want to waste a lot of time here. I think I'll do that. I kind of thought he would do that. And my brain waves just fell over here. I don't know why they're alive. My brain waves are alive. Uh, let's just keep working here. We've got to move our queen out of there to somewhere. Let's just move her over to here and see what happens. We were wasting a little bit of time there. Our brain waves fell over and things were not. Okay, so we'll just see what happens here. Could be interesting. I don't know what, just I don't know what is just going to happen. I haven't really seen this position before. I'm just kind of thinking like what it might be like. See, now he was just going to take that pawn anyway, so I think it's better. See, now he's going to got to move that that again. This seems like the safest place for it. I can't be checked by any of the knights if I go there. Well, that's an interesting move. At least I can take a pawn. I don't know if that's going to help me too much, but we'll see. He still would like to castle, and he can't. Um, we're missing some time on the clock here. We shouldn't uh, be wasting quite this much time. Unfortunately, um, we have wasted quite a bit of time, though. 
he still can't castle. Our queen looks like it's in a pretty safe position here um, where it really can't get hassled that I can see. And we will castle next move unless he does some sort of a weird threat that we need to respond to. It would be really nice to castle and link up our rooks. Hmm, if I go here, he's going to, okay, but I, I see where I can block. They often do th the same thing, the bishop comes here, but in this case, this can come out here and block, and he'll just have to move the bishop back or get, or get it lost. I think I can get his rook here if he doesn't bring his, I think I just put him in check and won his rook. See, I put him in check here and I'm attacking his rook at the same time. He would have had to avoid that. He would have had to bring his bishop back to here instead of to there. Okay, well, that was a pretty classic game. Uh, interesting game because you can see what happened there it was the classic thing where I prevented him from castling by moving this bishop out here when I had the opportunity and then the king just sat out there in the middle and the moral of the story was you know the king was in the middle got checked and lost the rook um, this stratagem that he had to bring the bishop down here immediately after I castled always works very, very good. Um, normally, you know, with the classic position where the knight here, um, because you have to move a pawn up to protect against the mate, and then he, he, he wins the exchange, he takes the rook. But in this case, I had a knight here, so he brought it up. I blocked the queen out with my knight, and he had to move the bishop back and moved it to the wrong space. So it, um, it was a good game. Let's, let's look at the analysis board, see how that looks. That's another cool thing about Lee Chess. Uh, this is all completely free. You get to do the analysis. You just click there. And they let you analyze totally for free. It's how in the heck do people even offer all this stuff for free? If you look at the um, graph here, we were doing very, very well. Okay, um, white did have these marginal little advantages, but it was a pretty tricky game, and we ended up uh, winning really big with that. Let's see what we did wrong here. I mean, we were ahead right here, and we made a wrong move. Um, if you click this little button here, it'll tell you what your next move should be. And apparently, when he moved his knight up here, it says that we should have brought this up to here. Because then when he came here, we could bring the queen back. It's saying to bring it back to here. I wonder, I probably wouldn't have done that. I probably would have brought it back to here or something, but. Okay, so it's a complicated opening. Uh, luckily it went very well for us. Uh, hopefully we got some good Braden brainwave data there. Let's play another one while we're ahead and Another five-minute game and see if we get some more brainwave data. Uh, good brainwave data. Uh, same, same old thing. We're doing the black. That time he accepted the Carol Can pawn. And if he takes this pawn, we just get a pawn in the middle matching his. And it's a symmetrical position as far as the pawns go. And, and that's fine. This knight can't come over and, oh, I always do the same thing. I always kind of screw up on this. I wanted to take that with the knight. That was a kind of a mouse slip, but maybe that'll make it more tricky for him. Okay, I got to 
I have to protect. He's, he's going to take this pawn if I if I don't bring that back and protect that pawn with my queen. And I better get ready for castling here pretty quick. I can also now I can get a pin on his knight. Uh, keep the pin on the knight if he wants to advance that pawn. Okay, um, we'd bring the bishop back here and. Who knows who has the advantage there. Most players don't like to open up their pawns so radically. But the, the pin, the pin is a handy pin. And we can do some interesting things here now. Um, I think this knight's going to come up to here. But it's, we're just going to bring the knight up quickly. Um... You see what he was doing there with his, he's got the line up there, and we'll just kind of like forever make sure he can't do that <laughs> again. Um, okay, we'll bring the rook over because it might get some play against the queen right there. A kind of a weird move. I moved the pawn up there. Uh, it looks like he can win this pawn, but it's going to be complicated because if he wins this pawn by taking this knight, I get an attack on this. Okay, this is a pretty important move now. I think he was going to win that pawn anyway, so I think the best thing I can do is is move that out. He's going to take here. He's going to win that pawn, but I'm just I'm just going to see if I what happens here. Um, protecting this pawn again with this knight. Now he can take that knight and that pawn goes over. He'll have a pass pawn, but he'll have to move his knight. Might give this some little play somewhere. We'll have to see. Um, looks like black's not doing really great right here. Um, uh, see, you know, he's going to do that, and this pawn can't protect. Hmm. Kind of didn't like that. I knew he was going to take that, and I decided to... He could have done a much more dastardly thing there. I may really made a mistake. He he could have taken this pawn with this knight, but I knew he was after that knight, that pawn, and he went for it like I thought. Just going to see if in some way we get some play here, counterplay. See, he was going to do this really dastardly thing there. Um... Just maybe running down the clock a little bit here. Is that possible for me to do? I think he's going to really come out really strong against me. If he attacks this knight the second time, I already know that I'm going to protect him with that which was probably not my best move because look what he did. He's going to get one of those now. I need, he's just going to get one of those. I don't know which one he's going to get. We'll see which one he takes. Took that one. We have very little advantage now. Person is really beating us really bad. The only possibility we have now is a very small, small, small possibility to run out the clock. And I don't think it's going to happen. But anything can happen in this game, right?
That was not looking very good. The only thing we can do is run out this clock. Hmm. No, we just lost the game. I'm going to resign. He just has to bring that down and make a queen. Okay, well, you win some, you lose some, right? Uh, it was a fun game. We might have got some nice brainwave patterns. Um, I, every once in a while I do, or actually quite often, I lose some games. And when that happens, we get brainwave patterns on what it looks like to lose. So that was good. We'll just amass some more data here. Let's get a new opponent. And we lost that game. I, I would like to win the next one to contrast the winning brainwaves with the losing ones. And just see the difference. Now, a lot of people look at these brainwaves and they just think it's so interesting. A lot of people say it's mesmerizing to just kind of zone out and watch the brainwaves. And... That's okay. I mean, a lot of people just come to see the brainwaves. No, they don't even know. They don't even uh, know how to play chess. A lot of the people, a lot of the... Okay, now if I take with the bishop, it's usually pretty good. But suppose I do something tricky and lift a rook. Was that possible? Hmm. He can't advance with the knight because of the of the bishop and the queen. And you see what he did? Should I just bring this down now? I think I really want to bring this rook across and I think it was Nimzovich who once said that a, a move that you can play and you don't play can actually sometimes be more dangerous than a move you actually play. I think that was Nimzovich that said that. I gotta get I wanna move this bishop out of there because I wanna bring the queen up here and then no, I can't bring him over there here. We'll see what happens here. Let me see. Ah, that would help me. If he takes that bishop with his knight, I get my queen over there in a very, very, very nice position. I'm thinking about lifting a rook again. Oh, wow. I really like having the queen right there. Ah, but then he did that and got me out of there. Oh, well. But after this, he's got to move this bishop out, and I get that pawn, so that'll be good. I'm just going to go for it. Now what? What? What now, brown cow? You can take that knight if he wants to, I guess. Gotta do something smart here. I gotta develop that bishop somehow, bring him up there and get his bishop out of there. That was not so great, was it? Um, that's okay though, I guess. You take me there and I retake with the queen, with the king. No big deal. Um, 
could bring this thing out. Probably that's what he's not really expecting. Ah, well. It's going to come out. I think this is the most viable spot for him because he can come back to here, keep him more in play. And I'm going to already bring him back over there because she was kind of out of play. Two minutes and 19 seconds. The amount of material is actually pretty darn good when you think about it. Hmm. That's my best move because if he tries to double on that file, I can bring the rook over here. Two minutes and two against two minutes and 69. I already get his queen off on that file. And who knows? I'll threaten a checkmate down there and see what happens. It's quite interesting. One minute and 54, I figured he would do that. He was already prepared to do that. Ah, that was a bad move. I have to come back here so I don't lose this pawn. Should not have done that. Oh well. Material-wise, we're doing okay, I guess. We gotta get our rook in action here somewhere. I don't know if we're at an advantage here or not. I don't know. I can't figure. Can't figure out who's winning here. I think it's going to come down to a pawn move like who has what they call the opposition. And I think right now, do I have the opposition? Can he go anywhere where? I think I just got what they call the opposition, where he's in a kind of a zugs wing situation. He would like, he doesn't really want to move. He went back there, I advanced with my king. Okay. I don't think he's going to have time to clean up over there like he want, like he's expecting. I think I'm going to get a queen here really soon. And wouldn't mind getting a second queen actually. My two queens are preventing his pawns from advancing. 37 seconds left. Yeah, two queens against a king um, and a lonely pawn. So you see, did you see that delta? 
Delta just went way, 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 way up uh, winning that game. Yeah, if you've paid attention to my channel before, you know that when I do something that I really like a lot, the Delta wave just goes way, way sky high. Um, so that was fun. It almost quit while I'm ahead, except I haven't only been streaming for about 15 minutes or so. I think, uh, no, 25 minutes. I don't know. That's kind of short, though. We'll try another game because the chatting here, it looks like, what, I got 60 followers there? That's, I mean, followers, I mean, viewers. That's pretty good. I mean, nobody's chatting. I think a lot of my viewers are just zoning out looking at the brainwaves. It's like. I don't even know if they listen to what I'm saying because they don't respond much in the chat. But um, anyway, that's a lot of viewers, 60. So I keep playing for a while. If you guys, if you guys like watching the brain waves, that's that's fine with me. So let's go ahead and uh, play another game, shall we? I'm gonna turn off my voice recognition here because it's doing it's telling me weird things. Uh, I'm gonna exit here. There, it was it was trying to do things. It was asking me about commands and stuff. And any moment, it's going to start saying things like, "Oh, oh, you you wanted to open this? Oh, okay, I'll open that. Turn that off. Oh, did you say turn that off, or did you say like open the the Spotify? You know the." can't understand anything so let's try another game that was fun um let's go ahead and play another five plus zero and this will be fun we will make our rating go up a little bit maybe or maybe make our viewers the viewers are holding really steady right there at 60 so I think this player uh, had to answer the phone or something. I don't think he was afraid of me. Some people get kind of freaked out when they see Steinich there and they think I might be out of their league or something because, you know, just because of the name. But, uh, but you know, a lot of people just have to answer the phone or you have no idea why some people act like they want to play and then they don't end up not playing. I don't know. Maybe the modem breaks. My beta was really high there for a while. I wonder why that was. I always try to move this pawn up as soon as possible, and because he's letting me do it, I'll do it. Uh, I think. I don't know if that's the actually the greatest move or not, but it might be okay. You know what? Usually I advance the pawn and kick the knight out when something like that happens. Should I force a weakness over there? I don't know a lot about pawn weaknesses and everything. You always hear the experts talking about those kinds of things, though. And they say yeah, that pawns become weak if you make a move a little bit. Could they get these what they call holes? I really don't know much about that either, but now what? This is crazy. I think I can do this. And he can't really take me because I'll get my rook and he will advance. And then after he advances, I wanted to attack this pawn. Because if he takes me there, then I put him in check. And that'll be pretty cool because I still got this line up here. And if he doesn't take me, I take him and then win a pawn and maybe put him in check next time, so. Uh, okay, he came up there. I don't see where he's gonna go, so I'll follow through with my plan. Oh, I thought I could take him, but he moved that knight away and I see that now. Mm. I have to try something different from what I was thinking. Okay, so. I'm going to open up on this pawn again and open myself up here too. My pawn position looks okay. 
He can kick this knight out of here, but the knight can go different places. Like back to here or back to here. He can't go a lot of places. I'm going to go here. If he moves this pawn up, I can only go back here. But I'll be able to cast on this side. Oh, this is a good move. Because um, I pinned this pawn. I can bring this knight up here and then take this pawn like I've been wanting to do. If he doesn't see that. I can do that. I'm giving him a little problems because he he's taking a lot of time on his clock. See now that pawn is pinned. And now the knight can do different things. It can come up here or it can take this pawn. If he takes this here. Thinking that this wouldn't be too bad. He see he broke the pin, so this knight had to move, and I, he couldn't take that pawn. So this kind of like makes him move again. I'm gonna castle next turn. He'll have to move his rook. That was interesting. I could take now with this too. I knew this guy in Sao Paulo, Brazil once. He was a world-class chess player. And he criticized my play at that time. He said, well, you're always trading short-term advantages for a bad position. And so that's why I took with the queen to keep these pawns in line. Okay, this pawn is pinned. I'm just going to bring the queen back over to here because don't see a lot that it's going to do over there. I can bring this one up, this bishop up, and bring the queen across somehow. Oh, we're a minute up on the clock, so that's kind of good. Maybe trade off that advantage when, when I have the chance. Okay, now I'll just... What are we doing here? Um, not so great, right? I don't know if I'm making a big mistake. I just didn't know what to do, so I just moved the king. Like All of the pieces look like they're in pretty good places. This rook's not doing very much. None of my pieces are really doing very much, to tell you the truth. They're just kind of hanging out and one minute and 35 to 217. This is going to come down. I think he's almost got the advantage here, but if I can just hold the fort here, so to speak. I thought he would do that. If he takes the bishop, I retake there, put the question to this rook. And this rook can always come over. This queen can't do anything because of this pawn. 
can't do anything really fast. Should I take this pawn? Let's see what he's doing. He was thinking about coming up into here. Yeah, I take here, and then if I retake, he gets a really dastardly attack with the queen against the king down here. As it is now, I can take with the rook and put his queen to flight. He's got 28 seconds. This is threatening checkmate. And that's it. Well, that was fun. That was a fun game. Oh, look at look at the Delta wave. Go up there again, the red one. The red one's riding up high on top. You know that, when you see stuff like that happening, I mean, that's just a very simple observation. Uh, we really have to go into all this data really heavy with a lot of uh, statistics, um, data analysis, um, every, everything. We have to throw all kinds of mathematics at the question of how the uh, brainwaves affect chess play. But definitely for sure, if you uh, follow my channel, you know that the delta waves always go up high when I win a game or do something that really makes me very happy. And they're still up there on top. So without any more ado, that was fun. Um, still at 60 viewers, which is cool. Everybody must be completely zoned out. I can't. It's just so amazing that people just sit there the whole time. They're not chatting. They just seem to be mesmerized by those brain waves. I hate to turn them off. Um, but that means like 60 people are just going to automatically uh, have to go somewhere else on Twitch or something. But anyway, that was fun, and hopefully see you tomorrow. Um, stay out of trouble, and if you like the if you like it, follow. I got you know 60 people are coming just about every day, and I don't have nearly that many followers. So if you click the follower button you know exactly when I'm going to be on all the time. Like they'll send you uh, one of those notices in the email. So then it's easy to find it and you can zone out, look at the brain waves, even if you don't want to chat, but, you know, follow in any case. So see you guys around. Bye-bye.